Hello, everyone. Taking writing workshop one and two. Spend a few minutes talking about what we'll be working on next week, week 16. We have two more weeks for the semester. And uh, the plan was for me to return back to the office on the 24th. Unfortunately, I'm going to not be back in the office until Thursday, the 26th. So I want to give you some ideas, some things to uh, think about and uh, continue working on as we work on our poems for this unit. I uh, went through and uh, was looking at your poems for the Tankas and the Sin Canes and also was looking again, checking the primarily the syllables for the limerick. And I have uploaded all of the grades in Canvas. So please take a look at all of your grades, your grades for the limericks, the tankas, and the syncanes. There's one assignment for the tankas and the syncanes, a separate assignment in Canvas for the limerick. You'll notice that there are 10 points possible for each of those two assignments. And I am giving five points for the, the writing of the poem and will later give you uh, points for actually reading the poems. So that grade, the final five points of each of those two assignments won't be reflected until we do the final reading at the end of the semester. So that that's going to explain the points that you have received. So for example, the limerick, if you receive five out of 10 points, that's full credit for having written the poem. You'll be assessed uh, for the final poem reading at the end of the semester. This week or early next week, we'll have at least one more practice run through for uh, all of the poems, the limericks, the tankas, and canes, and the sonnet. We'll have practice reading that. And uh, most of you have uh, practiced already uploading your audio for the tankas and the syncanes from last week. Okay, so this is also good practice for you to just start to feel comfortable reading the poems. And especially for the tankas and the syncanes, you'll notice that really the only requirement is respecting the syllables for each of the lines. There is no rhyming scheme, so we have a little bit of flexibility in how you deliver the poem. And so, like the limerick, try to relax when you're giving the poem or reading the poem, and you uh, try to incorporate pauses, be aware of the intonation, the highs and lows of your voice, to try to be more expressive, to try not to just simply read through the poem, but deliver it in a meaningful way. Okay, so a meaningful way, again, that you're showing some kind of uh, emotional element to your poems. And I really am enjoying uh, what I have been looking at. Uh, the images, I think, also very much uh, complement what you're trying to say in each of your poems. Finally, make sure that you're trying to include uh, figurative language. Okay, and we'll talk more about that when I come back next week. But make sure that you're trying to incorporate or include similes, metaphors, personification, assimilation, etc. Okay, uh, just as a reminder, this is where you can upload your St. Canes and Tonkas. I want to also share with you a website that I think might be useful. If you copy and paste your poems, each stanza, to this website, syllablecounter.net, and you click on count, you'll see at a glance, how many syllables are in each line. So I think this is a good check. Once you have completed each of your stanzas to copy and paste into this website, there are probably other websites, but I've been using this and it works pretty well. But you can see at a glance how many syllables that you should use. Remember for the Tonkas and the St. Canes, you were asked to in include two stanzas per poem. Two stanzas for the Tonka, two stanzas for the St. Cane. I'll leave it up to you if you want to write one poem and have two stanzas for that one poem, or if you want to write two separate poems, one stanza each. That's up to you. But we do need to have a total of four stanzas for the Tonkas and the St. Canes. All right, so please take a look at my notes and uh, my comments in Canvas. Make sure also that you have, uh, that you're keeping 
up to date the Word document in this folder called Unit 4 Creative Writing. Each of you has or should have a Word document. At this point in your Word document, you should have three poems, your Limerick, your Tonka, and your Sincane. So make sure that you have that there in your Word documents. In the second place, we need to have our poems, our three poems at this point, should be in the Excel spreadsheet. You can find that if you go into the Unit 4 Creative Writing folder. And you open up really the only spreadsheet in this folder called Poetry Table. And I would ask that you also copy and paste your final poem here, your final version. Okay, once it's completed, I would ask that you include it here uh, in the spreadsheet. Now the links, what I'm asking everyone is to include a hyperlink, so not to have this long link here for the URL, but include a, a hyperlink. And what's a hyperlink? I think we have one example. Where is it? This is it right here. So you can simply write the word link and then, and then insert the link into this text, okay? We refer to this as a hypertext or a hyperlink. You just type the word, oh, well, you gotta spell it right, of course, and then just go into insert. And copy and paste the link, the URL here in this space, and then okay. That's basically it. Okay, so I would ask everyone to include hyperlinks instead of these long URLs. And if you haven't already, also please include your poems in the, in the table. But do take a look at my feedback. There are some cases where you might, some of you need to go back to either the Limerick, the Tonka, or the St. Cane and check primarily for syllables making sure that you have the correct syllables per line. And in some cases in the limerick, some of you need to check again your rhyming, right? So remember, so we have five lines. Lines one, two, and five should rhyme, and lines three and four should rhyme. That is the last word, should rhyme. And when we when we say rhyme, primarily we're focusing on rhyming the consonant, the, 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 I'm sorry, not the consonant, the vowel sound, the vowel sound. Okay, so pat rhymes with cat, rhymes with mat. We're rhyming the, the sound a eh in mat, cat, mat. Okay, so we want the, the vowel sound. We want to try to make sure that we're rhyming the vowel sound. And if you have a diphthong, then we want to make sure that we're rhyming with the same diphthong. Mm -hmm. Like cow, ow. That's a diphthong, cow. I think the uh, we talked about using a website if you find it useful. It's it's not uh, foolproof, okay? And, and, you know, it really is gonna depend on how you end up saying the word, of course, but you know, if you type in a word, you're gonna get a lot of options here, okay? And, and you know, I think if you use a website like this, this will give you some ideas at a glance of some potential words that you could use. Again, it's not perfect, there might be, I mean, this is an easy example because this is one of the easiest words to, to choose from in terms of rhyming, but you know, try to use a website like this if you find it helpful. Maybe also use a website like like dictionary.com. Pretty much any dictionary nowadays online will give you, actually this is not dictionary.com, but Tapped. same idea. Any website that offers uh, a sound or a pronunciation for the word I think might be useful so that you can also hear the word. Tapped whenever you're um, considering what words to uh, use to rhyme with your, your limerick. I'll be back in the office, guys, on Thursday, May 26th. And I will be checking emails. We won't have class online. We won't have class as regularly scheduled uh, for, for Tuesday or Wednesday. We will, though, however, on Tuesday at 8.05, 
there will be a form available for 20 minutes for the figurative language review. So wherever you happen to be, you can sign in, you can use your notes, of course, but you will have 20 minutes to complete the online form. It will, you need to submit your form within those 20 minutes. Okay. So we'll continue having that on the 24th. It'll be online. I would access it a few minutes early, like say eight o'clock so that you're ready to go by eight Oh five. So you can begin immediately and make sure you submit your responses by eight twenty five. So that will continue. We'll have that on Tuesday, the 24th. I'll return to classes on the 26th and we'll schedule another figurative review on Friday. Again, 20 minutes, open book, open notes, whatever. Okay, so that's the plan for next week, week 16. We have two more weeks. We actually have 17 weeks, I guess 16 and a half if you want to consider Holy Week being half a week. But uh, we still have this week and this week is starting, yeah, this week and next week. Yeah, my date's kind of mixed up. Today's the 23rd. So yeah, we have this week and then we also have one more week uh, before we conclude class or the third, we will plan our final poetry reading on the third. Okay, the final thing I'll mention is to go ahead and uh, go to the assignments in Canvas. Begin working and thinking about your sonnet. The sonnet's going to be by far the most challenging uh, poem because of its length, because of its structure. So I have included the information here, how to write a sonnet. I've included a video. I would ask also between before we before I go back to class on the 26th, go ahead and read through these notes. Go ahead and watch the video. Begin writing your own sonnet. And again, the idea here, guys, is to begin writing your each of your poems in the Word document in Microsoft Teams. This is our quote unquote laboratory. This is where we're working together, where you can easily request feedback. And I can go into your document and leave you comments, much like what we did with the academic text. We can do the same for our creative writing. So again, this is where everyone should be working first and foremost. I would also include in your Word document a link to the image that you're using. I would suggest that you find that you try to find an image early on in your creative process so that you can use that image as you're coming up with ideas and finding examples of figurative language to incorporate into your uh, into your poem. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, I'll be back a couple of days later than I anticipated. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see everybody on Thursday. And again, reach out to me. You can send me um, you can send me uh, chats via Teams. You can send me a chat there if you have any questions. Or you want me to review any of your um, poetry that we've uh, been working on. All right, guys, we'll see everyone on Thursday.